Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Tyler and today I'm going to show you how to make a press break and I'm going to show you a way to do it that's going to work no matter what kind of press you have. After we get done with that, I'm going to take a piece of 3 8 flat bar and I'm going to bend up like a bracket, I don't know what you'd even call it, a latch I guess, for the gate on my cattle corral because I've got another project that I need to get done and this is the piece that I need. So enough talking, let's get working. So the press that I'm going to put this on is a 20 ton Harbor Freight press, but like I said, this will work on any kind of press that you have. So the first thing we want to do is measure between these two beams, and that measurement is going to be pretty important because everything is going to be that width, and probably be smart to give yourself about three quarters of an inch of wiggle room. So I'm going to take that measurement and I'm going to cut this piece to length. And this will be the base of our press break. After that's cut, we need to cut two pieces of angle iron the same length. I would recommend using pretty heavy duty angle iron for this because it's gonna endure some abuse. I'm using two by two by quarter and that's plenty strong enough so anything like that will work. After we get our two pieces cut out, lay them flat on a table right up next to each other and measure how wide they are. Mine are five and three eighths, which is not gonna work on my four inch piece of tube, so I had to add a two inch piece of tube to get my six inches. Now, because I have to weld this together, I went ahead and clamped it down to the table. You wanna clamp it down because when you're just welding on one side like I'm gonna be doing, the heat from the weld will pull the two pieces and then the other side won't be perfectly flat and it needs to be perfectly flat for the way that we're going to be using it. So once you get these two welded together, or you know, maybe you had a, the right size piece and you didn't have to do that step. Anyway, whatever the case, Lay your two pieces of angle iron on top, right up next to each other. And we're gonna wanna clamp these down because again, as you're welding them, you don't want them to move at all because we wanna keep this a pretty sharp 90 degree angle. So whatever you do, don't weld in between the two pieces. You only wanna weld on the outsides like this. Once you have these two pieces of angle welded on there, you're done with the bottom piece and you can move on to the top piece. Unfortunately, I already had this made before I decided to make a video out of this, but I thought, you know what, if you guys are tackling this project, if you just see what I've got here, you'll be able to copy it pretty easily. It's the same angle iron that I used on the bottom piece with some half by two flat bar gussets and an inch and a half pipe. Now the reason I use inch and a half is because that is what my arbor is on my press. So whatever size your arbor is, that's the size pipe that you want to use. Um, you can use tube or pipe, it doesn't matter as long as the arbor fits in there tight. So once you have your arbor and your top piece, tighten your two pinch bolts down and as long as everything looks straight this thing's ready to work so here we've got our piece of metal in there and this may seem like a little bit of overkill but you want to use a square like i did to make sure that your workpiece is perpendicular to the press break or else your angles will be funky your quality will be poor and you just won't be happy with your work so when you've got it in there straight, how it needs to be, 
go ahead and start pumping on that jack. And if you're bending three eighths like I am, you're gonna get a workout. Now I'll just take the piece out and flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. Again, checking to be perpendicular. Uh, this one was a little off, so I took the time to straighten it out, and it's a good thing I did because the piece ended up being just how I wanted it. I'm thinking that 3 8 flat bar is probably the most that this 20 ton jack could handle. If you're wanting to do anything bigger than that, I hope you got a bigger jack. All right, so just checking my angles, they're not perfect 90s, which I kind of didn't think they would be, but they're pretty close. And for what we're doing, that's gonna be fine. Uh, the last thing is to cut out a little um, brace for the center. And because I'm using this 3 8 flat bar, it's pretty thick stuff. I like to bevel where I'm gonna weld. And the reason that I do this is because it creates more surface area for the weld to penetrate into. And it just results in a much stronger weld. So now I got this piece on the table. I'm gonna measure, figure out where the center is and make a mark and then I can weld the piece that I just cut out onto the center. This is an ideal situation for one of these welding magnets. Um, one thing to note on the welding magnets, especially when that's the only thing holding your workpiece, is that you don't want to just finish weld it right away. You want to go ahead and tack all four corners. And the reason that you do this is because if you don't and you just start welding it on there, the heat from the weld pulls the metal and the magnet's not going to be strong enough to keep it straight. If you got tacks on there, then the tacks are strong enough to keep it straight. Well, I'll lay this final bead and then I'll do a couple of tacks on the ends just for, you know, good luck. And this piece is going to be done and ready to go. Alright guys, well there you have it, a homemade press break and it really wasn't even that hard. Hey, if you liked the video, or if you want to see what this piece I made is going to be used for, give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe.